Hey folks, how you doing? Hope you all doing good. So in this video, we are gonna see, what if Naruto was modify Android Saiyan, Naruto x Android 18, this is part 2, and if you want more of this, then please leave a like share and subscribe. Also don't forget to check it out author of this fanfic, let's get in the video. Wicked waves lapped at the shore of the idyllic island, causing still more of its land to crash into the sea. What had once been a fertile paradise had since been reduced a little more than a speck of arid soil upon the seas by the pitched battles that had taken place here. And still, the water spat and churned. The ocean was eager to reclaim what had once belonged to it and indeed it seemed it just might before the day was done, should the battle continue. And continue it must. Continue it would. Three titans stood upon its barren soil. One was a pure-blooded Saiyan full of power and pride, the second an earthling made cyborg fueled by wrath and rage, and the third a terrible union somewhere between the two, a loathsome being devoid of sentiment or feeling, determined to eradicate the planet and all her inhabitants. Whomever walked away from this battle would hold the fate of Mother Earth in his hands. Piccolo knew this and yet he couldn't keep his hands from trembling as he hung there in the sky. He was completely outclassed here, it was all he could do to watch the scene unfold and hope somehow that the world wouldn't end with its destruction. Bohin. Goku. You'd better hurry up in there. He silently urged his allies, knowing they must still have hours left to train in the hyperbolic time chamber. Because I think the Earth is going to lose no matter who wins this fight here today. Super Vegeta didn't care for the Earth nay, he'd never been more thrilled in all his life. For once, Kakarot was the furthest thing from his mind. Here he stood, at the height of his power, ready to do battle. And here standing before him, were two powerful opponents. One of whom had just sworn to end him. Naruto's little power-up intrigued him. Originally, he'd let Cell absorb 18 for the purpose of fighting him. Now, the so-called ultimate android's perfect power didn't seem to be all he had made it out be. He was just standing there with that strange little smile on that smug face of his, as though he knew something Vegeta didn't. Nonsense. He was the prince of all Saiyans. None could compare to his newfound might. Naruto didn't share his opinion. His vision was red with rage, his newfound cloak swirling around him like a second skin, his hair standing jagged at attention. Had he any sense left at all, he might have realized the Saiyan cells implanted him by Dr. Jiro were finally awakening, reacting to his rage to grant him a tear of newfound power. While not a super Saiyan by blood, these powers, coupled with that of his own, lent his aura an eerie resemblance to that of a snarling Kitsune, fangs bared in defiance of the world and all that stood to oppose him. And his power was still rising. Much like Vegeta, he'd never felt so powerful in all his life, and yet all he could think of was vengeance. He could do so much good with his strength, but his mind, nay, his very soul refused to deviate from the path he had set before himself. Phil Vegeta. Maybe he'd be able to think straight once he ended the proud prince. Maybe not. Naruto knew only thus, if he didn't kill something, and soon, he was going to lose himself entirely. His mind was filled with foul thoughts of how he would break the prince killing him outright would be far too merciful of how he would demean him, debase him, make him suffer for his part in the loss of 18. Then and only then, when he was on both knees and begging for his miserable wretched of a life, would Naruto end him. Perhaps not even then. Just the thought of it made him angry. Bill kill 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 kill. Ironically, Cell sympathized with the blazing blonde. The now complete creation of Dr. Jiro could barely restrain himself as he observed the standoff between Saiyan and Shinobi he was eager to test himself against the victor of their little squabble. How frustrating it must be, he mused, to be so powerful and not have a worthy foe to test your strength against. While he could have easily attacked Vegeta before his counterpart, he waited instead to see the inevitable outcome of their fight. As if there was any doubt in the outcome. Even at a passing glance he could see who the victor would be. The only question was. Could they? As if sensing the blonde's agitation, Vegeta's glance swerved from Cell to Naruto. Nevertheless, this blonde intrigued him. He'd picked apart trunks like he was nothing, and that was before the transformation. But he hadn't killed him. Far from it. Even now the prince could see his only son struggling out of that crater in which he'd been left to die. No matter. His son was weak. He was not. He was Super Vegeta. Nothing could stop him. And he'd prove it. Right now. Just how long are you going to stand there and play the fool? Vegeta demanded, crossing both arms before his chest. Funny, I could have sworn you said something about making me pay. It was the wrong thing to say. Naruto stared at him for a long moment, his eyes narrowing to the merest of slits. You could feel the rage in his glare such as it was, even tasted on your tongue. The scream, when it came, was mind-numbing. It tore at Vegeta's ears and ruptured the skyline itself, summoning the thunderclouds once more to darken the horizon for miles in every direction. Now what? Piccolo choked out, even here, in the sky, he could feel everything shaking. Unreal. Trunks ground out. 
And then impossibly Naruto began to transform again, his Kai taking a sudden and unexpected jump. His already spiky mane seemed to grow even longer and jagged, saffron locks standing on end like jaggest shards of glass. Muscles bulked up and bulged every so slightly beneath his orange-blue guy, causing the earth underfoot to crater, sending the debris rocketing away in all directions. There he goes again. Cell murmured to himself, silently awed by Naruto's display. Incredible. A dreadful thought plucked at his pride just then. Was this cyborg superior to him? An artificial union of Saiyan and Shinobi. He knew at once that this 21 was no mere human, no earthling could exude this amount of power. 21, was he a clone of one of Earth's guardians perhaps, the first guardian recreated from the ground up? A being forged with both cybernetics and cells, much like his own. But how could that be? This model had been created after him. To think even for a moment that the purity of his cells comprised solely of Saiyan and Shinobi, with minimal robotics made this Naruto superior to him. Preposterous. Cell shook his head at the thought, refusing to believe that his complete power could possibly pale in comparison to this warrior. He would have his turn soon enough, and then, he would prove that he was the strongest of all. In the universe. Ignorant to the thoughts of his predecessor, Naruto continued to change. Sapphire sparks scrawled across his form, violet eyes began to blur and blend into an eerie shade of seafoam green, whilst the cross shaped her eyes as remained. Naruto didn't stop screaming, not even for an instant. Power poured from him like a river from a dam, blasting away all that stood before him. It lasted all of an instant the second transformation, but the difference between this form and the last were like night and day. Lightning twitched and writhed around Naruto like a thing alive now, enshrouding him in awkwardly essence. An essence that far surpassed Vegeta's, he just didn't know it yet. And then it was done. The shinobi scream cut off with a sharp snarl, his gaze snapped down to fix upon the proud Saiyan. Never. Vegeta, when Naruto at last lowered his gaze, when he finally spoke, the words were little more than a dry and barren rasp, emerging from a throat scraped hoarse and raw. I can never forgive you for what you've done. He started forward without another word, or a snapping and snarling at his feet, sparking with fierce intent. Those eerie eyes never left his, not even for a moment's, crossed pupils angry and intent upon the proud prince, upon their prey. Despite himself, Vegeta felt just a touch intimidated. W what am I feeling? He found himself taking a step backward in spite of his best efforts to stand fast. Fear. No. It can't be. I am Vegeta. Prince of all Saiyans. I am the best. The greatest. There's no way this piece of scrap can be better than. Not me. His final word trailed off in a strangled as clenched knuckles barreled into N his visage, bending bone and crushing capillaries. Trunks couldn't believe his eyes. Father. Vegeta only realized he'd been hit after his forehead kissed the stone floor, sending him sprawling in a way on self-respecting Saiyan desired. What's the matter, my dear prince? Now it was Naruto's turn to smile, but as was the stuff of madness, any trace of civility had vanished with this transformation. You should be honored. You're going to be my first victim. The first one I crush, maim, slaughter. Isn't this what you wanted? His words rose into a laugh, and Vegeta half expected the blonde to charge in guns blazing. Naruto did neither, instead he simply raised one hand and advancing, uttered a single world with world-altering consequences. Vegedama. Vegeta had just enough time to register the word before a massive black sphere erupted before his vision, blotting out all else. Fast. He fired off a blast of his own in a vain attempt to block and overpower the blonde's technique, but to no avail, his big bang attack was swiftly swallowed up by the encroaching sphere. Damn it. He hadn't expected this. Desperate, he flung both hands forward, thinking to deflect Bijadama. That. Would prove to be his first mistake. His gloves smoldered away at its touch, searing into his fingers, into flesh and bone. I can't. Stop him. Of course you can't. Naruto's voice hissed soft and harsh from his flank, causing the prince's head to turn. Nothing can stop me now. Too little, too late. The madman was already behind him, a second blast cradled in the palm of his hand. No. Caught between a rock and a hard place, the self-entitled Saiyan could only stand there, helpless as the sphere grew larger, then larger still. No, no, no. He knew what was coming, but with all his energy diverted into deflecting the Bijadama into preventing his own annihilation he could no more best him than he could stop the sun from setting. No, 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 no fuck. The scream tore its way out of the prince's throat a millisecond before the massive Rasengan plowed into his back. Tao Dama Rasengan. Cell creaked open an eye, stifling a yawn as he beheld Vegeta's brutal battering. It had grown so boring he'd actually drifted off there for a moment. Just as he thought, Naruto was toying with the prince. He was intent to make him suffer as 18 had suffered. Wait. Where had that thought come from? The ultimate android racked his brain, silently wondering. 
Was there still some semblance of 18 left over within him even after she'd been absorbed? No. That was nonsense. And even if there was some residual essence remaining, it wasn't as though she could do anything to stop him, right? Of course not. He was Cell. The Jedi's frustrated snarl bore down on him, reminding him that the prince didn't have that much time left. Naruto was taking the fight to him, bloodying the arrogant Saiyan bit by brutal pit. Cell almost felt sorry for his plight. Almost, but not quite. Because the instant Vegeta fell and he would fall he would have the chance to test himself against the successor of his. Both Trunks and Vegeta had disappointed him, he was almost irated to find a challenge in another cyborg, to think that his cells would sing at the thought of facing this fool. Yes, soon it would be his turn. And then. Then. God he would show this boy true power. He was the ultimate. His power was maximum. Nothing could compare to him. Even as he thought this it never once occurred to him that there might still be other androids. Leagues away, deep within the lifeless ruins of Dr. Jiro's lab, something stirred. Perhaps, had Krillin and Trunks been more thorough, this never would have happened. Perhaps if they were more complete in their curiosity, they would have discovered the bunker beneath the bunker. But they had not and now, deep within the darkness, activated by the surge of energy that was 21. These creations, clone beings modified from the originals, were meant to react to one another. 21 was merely the first of several and personality aside, was by far the most complete of these creations. But even an imperfect creation could awaken, as one did now. She woke with a start, her body bucking, her eyes flashing open. Her first thought was of suffocating, trapped in a tiny metal box that seemed several sizes too small for her. Her hands pressed against the cold steel, in an instant she realized the horror of where she was. She was in a coffin. Let me out. Their feet lashed out, striking the metal lid of the canister. Of her coffin, with enough force to warp steel and shatter stone. The canister sprang open with a sibilant hiss the seals breaking to reveal nothing but darkness at first. Gradually her eyes began to add to the gloom in the room, revealing that she wasn't as alone as she'd first thought herself to be. Flickering lights registered in the distance, illuminating a massive supercomputer the like of which she'd never. It was the source of the light, hard at work upon a series of coffins adjacent to her own. From here, she could only just make out the numbers emblazoned upon them. 13. 14. 15. And there, lined up beside her in almost perfect order were still others, their seals unbroken. 23. 24. 25. She cringed aside at the sight of them, something deep inside screamed at her not to touch them. Damned it but she wanted out of here. The woman lashed out once again, tearing through the debris with an iron fist, a single-mindedness that even Cell would have envied. Stone and gravel crumbled before the unintentional Kai blast, exposing her and hers to the light of day for the first time in a century. Dark eyes squinted against the sunlight, narrowing. Naruto. She could feel him fighting, feel his anger growing with each passing second. She barely knew who she was, where she came from, or how she'd come to be like this. It was all very much a blur. She was certain of only one thing. Naruto. She had to go to him. Now. Naruto. Android 22 turned in the direction of the energy, took her lip between her teeth, and began to rise. She did so slowly at first, but with growing confidence came strength, and it wasn't long before she was more than several miles into the air. This was so strange. It was as if she'd woken up after a long slumber, and yet the memory of flight was somehow there, ushering her on. I'm coming, Naruto. Murmuring his name for a final time, she streaked into the distance. Damn it, Vegeta hissed as he dragged himself out of the wreckage of a recently collapsed rock formation. One that had been standing moments before Naruto had hurled his body into it. Damn it, damn it, damn it. He stood on shaking legs as he raised his body back up to a more level position. His arms were quivering as he pointed it at Naruto, the slim cyborg's cold eyes glaring down from behind the vicious glow of his cloak and aura. Vegeta still couldn't seem to bring the boy down, even after just landing a pair of Big Bang the hybrid was still attacking him with a seemingly endless level of vitality. Nothing that Vegeta had done up to this point had seemed to phase Naruto, and it was starting to make him feel a touch uncomfortable. Your arms are trembling, Naruto's amused voice called out from behind clenched teeth, Vegeta. HRMPH, Vegeta countered sardonically as he forced them to stop trembling, and he straightened up as much as he could, puffing out his chest slightly. That's from excitement, I'm about to send you to hell, and these arms of mine know it. Really? Naruto asked before vanishing in a whisper, appearing directly in front of Vegeta. The Saiyan's teal-colored eyes widened as the cyborg in front of him brought a fist over his head. Let's test it then shall we short stuff. The hand came crashing down with tremendous speed, Vegeta barely being able to dodge the attack, as it turned that particular section of the island into a pile of pebbles. He took off in a flash, hoping to play some distance between himself and the android, and possibly fire off another Big Bang attack. 
The sound of a snarl suddenly filled his ears as the slender frame of Dr. Jiro's supposedly ultimate shinobi Saiyan warrior filled his peripheral vision. Vegeta snapped his head to the left, but the cyborg had already sprung his assault. The back of Naruto's hand swung up from below and slapped the prince into the air. Rasen shuriken, Naruto said calmly as he jutted both his hands forward, a translucent shuriken of energy rocketing out of the center of his palms. The deadly spiraling sphere roared into the sky, slightly overtaking the afternoon sun in brightness as they shot up towards the flailing Saiyan. Big Bang attack. Vegeta yelled in retaliation as he swung the his charred palm forward, the sphere of his attack, shattering the cyborg's Rasen shuriken into shards of harmless energy. Naruto quickly dodged out of the way, the blasts obliterating a few errant hairs as it passed by. The golden warrior looked down at the singed follicles and growled. Vegeta was already in front of him, Kai blast in hand, stabbing forwards at Naruto's heart. The android grabbed at the attack, his fist gripping the blast and Vegeta's forearm. Then he smiled. Vegeta cried out in agony as Naruto squeezed down mightily, his large palm mercilessly crushing the Saiyan's limb. You never learn, he began slowly, snarling as he ground the bones together, do you? You don't care about others. Only yourself. If I hadn't transformed to fight you, you'd have gone on to fight Cell, without so much as a care in the world. Even now, all you can think about is how to destroy me. But what about 18? Tighter still he squeezed, any longer and the limb would certainly break. What about the one you let die? Naruto flung Vegeta back down, the blue-clad warrior's body slamming into the stone below. Vegeta coughed up a thick wad of blood as he bounced off the earth, his eyes squeezing shut in agony before he fell back down to the stones. He struggled to stand, the pain of a broken rib shooting throughout his body, while he forced himself back to his feet. Naruto snapped into existence behind him seconds later his hand descending faster than a falling star, and just as merciless forcing Vegeta to become intimate with the soil in a way no one desired. As a first he plowed into the ground, the momentum shoving mud into his nose and stones into his eyes. Face down with another man beating your ass. Naruto barked out a laugh, landing behind him. Is it Wednesday already, Vegeta? Somewhere in the distance, Cell's laughter could be heard. Son you've a bitch. Ignoring the pain in his chest, Vegeta vaulted to his feet. This boy was making a mockery of him. Again. He would not stand for it. He would not. I will not stand for this. Roaring his fury the prince of all Saiyan rocketed upward, engulfed in a stream of golden light. Naruto watched his foe ascend calmly, without so much as a hint of concern. He adopted a bracing stance almost on instinct, whatever came next would have all of the prince's energy behind it. Hear me, boy. Vegeta declared, his voice thundering across the canyon like a lightning bolt. Once again you have taken for granted the powers. Of a true Saiyan warrior. He thrust both arms forward, palms against palms, cupping a snarling sphere of saffron within. Now if you really want to test your strength, stare right where you are. Naruto did just that, he stood still as a god, unflinching as the planet itself began to tremble in fear around him. Cell offered no opinion of this display, he merely frowned. Vegeta was being reckless. If he hit the planet with that, there was a good chance the earth might. Vegeta's lost it. Piccolo exclaimed. Trunks was of a like mind. You're going to destroy the whole planet. Father. You've got to stop it. Vegeta wasn't listening. Final flash. To be frank, Naruto experienced a split second of surprise as the massive golden blast burst from Vegeta's hands. Then he felt only anger. Oi oi. That was too much energy. Was he going to be a sore loser and destroy the planet as well, he'd just enough time to fling a hand before his face before the beam barreled into him, showering the island in brilliant luminance. So fierce was the blast that it sent trunks hurtling into the air in an eye blink, just avoid being swallowed up by the technique. I see. He realized in a flash. He focused all his power on the android. Unbelievable, Piccolo muttered. And indeed, Vegeta had done just that, though effort had left him severely drained. He sank back to the earth, sweat beating upon his brow. There, did you like that? He rasped out. That. Wasn't too bad. To everyone's disbelief, the smoke cleared to reveal Naruto, staring at the severed stump of his hand. You actually managed to disarm me with that. However, the muscles of his severed arm began to writhe and bulge, light flowing from his cloak and into the limb. With seconds his hand was restored, flawless fingers fisting together to form a complete palm. Naruto shot Vegeta a sneer and started forwards once again, boots clicking against the upturned stone. Vegeta couldn't believe it. His best attack, and the blonde was still coming for him. No. This couldn't be happening. No. This couldn't be the limit of his power. Is that all, Prince? He asked. I've enjoyed our little warm-up thus far, but I think it's time we ended this farce. He raised his hand, fingers splayed. Naruto grinned, his was a visage entirely devoid of mirth. 
More and more he could feel himself slipping into the madness of this form, and yet he was powerless to stop it, his own anger, the very source of his newfound power, was slowly driving him insane. When you let 18 be absorbed, when I watched her die, it took a piece of me. Naruto replied. I wonder how you would feel if I took someone from you. Perhaps then, you'd be able to understand my pain. His gaze traveled to Trunks, still struggling to recover. No. He decided at last. You don't care for your son. Only yourself. In that case. The Jedi's visible eye went wide as his right arm was severed from his body, the limb now falling away from him in a flash. The gloved fingers were wriggling slightly as the nerve endings within them struggled to receive signal from his brain once more, dropping the Kai blast that they once held, as his hand groped on blindly. The Jedi lunged forward, his left arm stretched out in an attempt to grab and retrieve the fallen limb. Ah, ah, ah. Uzumaki Naruto buzzed into view, his body blocking the Saiyan's limb, Jaden eyes glaring out coldly from behind the frightening grin of his cloak. With a hiss, he swung his hand backwards, a golden blast of Kai rocketing out from the tip of his fingers and incinerating both the prince's arm and his blast within the dark energy. Deprived of his limb, Vegeta found himself choking on his own blood, unable to believe what he just witnessed here today. His arm. This android. Had just severed his arm. He. 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 Naruto stalked after him, a cold smile wreathing his every feature. Welcome to the end of your life. He hissed. And I promise it's going to hurt. But how to end you? A big bang. A Kamehameha. Of course. I could always use your own final flash against you. He pretended to think it over for a moment before shaking his head. Nah, let's try mixing the two. Then maybe you'll finally know a quarter of the pain I'm feeling right now. Enjoy your trip to Otherworld. Grinning like a madman he placed both hands apart from one another thumbs touching, fingers stretched to their full length. Big bang. A sphere the size of his head sizzled into existence, swelling until it amassed the entire size of his body. Naruto's grin twisted itself into a stern scowl. Vegeta felt the blood rush from his face. No. That was too much Kai, even for him. He couldn't possibly block that. He needed to dodge. Get out of the way, now. And yet despite himself, the prince of all Saiyans found himself transfixed by fear, clutching at the bloodied stump of his arm, as Naruto charged up his deadly attack. Father? Cried Trunks. Dot Kamehameha. Pain was all the prince of Saiyans knew as Naruto's newly created Big Bang Kamehameha washed over him, searing the skin from his flesh. And there was nothing he could do to stop it. He was powerless to do anything but writhe in absolute agony while as the blast barreled him into the ground. And as he fell, he wondered. How could this be happening? He was the prince of all Saiyans. He was supposed to be invincible. How then could he have lost to this bucket of bolts? Earth. This was next thought as the island split beneath him. Impossibly, Vegeta was still alive. Miraculously, he'd survived the blast. He almost wished he had. Every inch of him burned from head to toe, and his bones had been badly broken in places, raw muscle exposed, ripped into open air. What? He. He couldn't feel his legs. No. No. A squinted glance was more than enough to confirm his worst fears. They'd been blasted clear off him just above the knees, leaving little more than a pair of charred stumps behind. But how had that happened? The proud Saiyan caught a glimpse of himself in the water just then, and his heart dropped into his stomach. His transformation was undone, he was no longer Super Vegeta. Curses. His body must have reverted to its base form at some point during Naruto's attack. And with his arm gone, he didn't even have the strength to fly anymore. He was little more than an unarmed cripple at this point. There was no way he could continue the fight now, and yet. His pride demanded that he must. He still had one good arm. Trying to force himself up on that remaining arm proved even more foolish, Naruto was already there to greet him, towering over him like the devil itself. How does it feel, Vegeta? He sneered, to be powerless. Damn it. Vegeta growled, to which the cyborg frowned. Pia. The prince's face was swiftly met with an elbow, driving him back into the soil and this time into sweet merciful blackness. Naruto gazed down at him a moment, then raised his hand, fingers splayed. A ball of Kai snarled to life in his palm, blinding in its brilliance, growing larger with each passing second. That was when he felt it. A sudden surge of power that could only belong to one person. Vegeta's son. HMMPH. His power level had taken a sudden jump. Still, it was nowhere near his own, but he'd surpassed his weak fool of a father by leaps and bounds. Interesting. 21. Trunks growled, stalking forward. Step away from Vegeta and face me. And so the son steps in to save the father, the Saiyan Shinobi mused to himself. But not this time. No. Naruto replied aloud, his voice colder than ice. I think not. Events unfolded rapidly, far too swiftly to predict, one moment Vegeta was lying there, his face buried in the mud. 
The next, a blast of Kai erupted from Naruto's palm and incinerated said prince, reducing his body to so much ash. Trunks didn't even have time to defend his father. By the time he realized what was about to happen, Vegeta was already gone. All that remained was a black scar upon the earth. No. No, this couldn't be. It just couldn't. His father couldn't be gone. Even as he stood there, struggling to cope with the loss of his father, Naruto turned to face Cell. Now it's your turn. The bio-android unfolded his arms, an eager smile wreathing his pale visage. At last. They squared off against one another, each waiting for the other to make the first move. Ooh. Both bots turned, seemingly startled by the Demi Saiyan scream. Trunks transformed in an instant, his muscles bulking to inhuman proportions, power level skyrocketing. Blinded by fury, he lunged at Naruto. The cyber didn't even bother to turn. He merely raised a hand behind his back and caught the punch, parrying it with no effort at all. He gave no ground, the attack wasn't even enough to make him flinch. This is your true power. He mused, his single eye regarded the Demi Saiyan with frightening apathy. Disappointing. All you've done. Is bulk up your muscles. He struck down, a single blow was all it took to render Trunks insensate. Another drove him into the sweet blackness of sleep. Should he kill him? For a moment, the thought weighed heavy on his mind. But then again perhaps he should. No. There had been enough death today. Naruto glanced up, tossed the Demi Saiyan at Piccolo. The Namekian deftly caught the broken Saiyan and slung him over a shoulder baffled by the android's sudden display of mercy. He was even more baffled by what came next. Get out of here, Namek. A low growl issued from the back of the blonde's throat. This is no longer your fight. And it was true. The only reason he deigned to spare the Namek at all was because he'd fraught against Cell and held him off, however briefly, despite the latter being in his semi-perfect form. For that, he would live. Piccolo dithered a moment longer rooted in place by the boy's bleak gaze. Naruto had defeated Vegeta. Like he was nothing. Broke him to pieces. Murdered him. In cold blood. And he'd taken Trunks out in two hits. He was so powerful. But did he really stand a chance against Cell? Should he stay and aid him? No, he told himself, this cyborg hybrid might be the best possibly the only hope against Dr. Jiro's twisted creation. If anyone could defeat Cell, it would be him. The question was. Would he be able to stop? This new power of his was volatile. Unstable. Kami only knew ha. Huh? The irony. What might happen if you're Animuk? Not even Piccolo had any chance of knowing what Naruto might do here today. He risked a glance back at the bleak scar upon the earth that marked the prince's final resting place. The arrogant Saiyan had paid the ultimate price for his pride, and he'd paid in blood. You fool. Piccolo shook his head in shame, antennae bobbing from the motion. You might have unleashed something even worse than Cell. We shouldn't even bring you back. If worse came to worse, they could always go to Namek and revive him with the Namekian Dragon Balls. Wait. A brilliant thought entered his mind. If they could go to Namek then they could, in theory, find someone to create new Dragon Balls. Even act as the Earth's new Gwarding. Then his union with Kami wouldn't be for nothing after all. Mollified perhaps even slightly excited by the idea the Super Namek burst into motion and streaked across the horizon. Naruto didn't take his gaze away from the Namekian until he was certain he was gone, little more than a speck in the distance. Then and only then did he turn to face his opponent. It seems you've saved them for now. Cell remarked in passing. Naruto frowned, his rage barely held in check. Then why did you let me? Isn't it obvious? Cell replied with a wave of his hand. I'm interested in you. Not them. I can kill those fools anytime I want. But enough about those weaklings. I'd much rather address my fight with you. You've been holding back your true power back long enough. A small smile wreathed his pale features. What do you say? Shall we get our fight started? Fight you? Naruto's felt his anger reach a new plateau at the words. No, I want to kill you. You have a strong fighting spirit, 21. Cell commended him, uncrossing both arms. I will enjoy draining you of it. You want me? His successor growled. Come and get me. Oh, I will. His predecessor smiled. But show me more of that wonderful power of yours first. It's been so long since I've had a worthy opponent. There was an eager avarice in his eyes, like a child impatiently waiting to unwrap their presence on Christman's morning. A touch of pity pierced Naruto through his rage. Cell thought he was simply testing himself against a worthy opponent. He had no idea what he was getting himself into. The hybrid almost felt sorry for his counterpart, for the foolish mistake he was about to make. Almost, but not quite. The muscle jumped in Naruto's jaw. All right then. Now or never. If Cell wanted to see true power, then so be it. Yes, that's the way. Cell goaded him on. Take your time. Let it all go. I want you to be at full strength when I destroy you. Blinded by fury, Naruto gave his anger the reins, not yet willing to rely upon the Kaiken. 
storm clouds raged overhead as his aura expanded, lightning engulfing him once more. Burgeoned by the twin powers of Senen Mode and his one-time tenant's power, his very form seemed to glow, becoming a lamp opaque with power. A short scream ended his power up, sending still more of the island crumbling into the sea. Cell watched all of it with a sneer, his blood pounding with excitement. By turn. Cell clenched both hands into fists at his sides. Naruto couldn't believe his eyes. We're. Not exactly even. Cell finished with a smirk. Yes, I'm rather surprised myself. This should be entertaining. No, he was wrong. Naruto estimated his own power still slightly stronger, and if he pushed himself even further. Who knew what he might be capable of? But his Saiyan Cell sang a song of battle, despite his hatred for Cell, he too was all too eager to test himself against him, this most hated of foes. But he wasn't willing to risk his life force. Not yet. With a roar, he lunged. This one's for 18. Once more the first hit belonged to Naruto, he sheathed his fist in Cell's stomach, burying it to the elbow. The android roared in pain, but did not falter, instead countering with a brutal haymaker that left the blonde seeing stars for the first time since ascending to this ungodly form. And then there was only motion. They raged against one another as only predecessor and successor could, exchanging blows that left the island quaking and the horizon shaking. Finally Cell struck a decisive blow, the pointed tip of his heel smashing into Naruto's cheek, causing him to stagger. The green android took that opportunity to streak upwards his hands already cut together, even as he ascended to the clouds. This was it. The challenge he'd always longed for. Here, in this boy. Alec Gunn. Naruto found his footing just in time to see the swell of violet light roaring down towards him. Oi. That was way too much energy. If it hit the planet. Are you insane? He roared. Apparently Cell was. Higher. Naruto was now the one to find herself on the sudden defense, his palms arcing upwards to barely block the broad blast that rocketed downwards from the heavens. The spear of light clashed against his palms within a surprising amount of force, the searing edge cells kiting nothing against the resilient palms that were pressing against it. He slid back almost a foot before finding his balance and planting his feet. Naruto grinned as only a man bereft of everything else could and lashed out with a knee, striking the blast head on. I bucked and bulged beneath his attack, bending around the limb. Suddenly, and without warning, it surged upward. Cell nimbly dodged aside as his own blast streaked past before his very AEs, tearing through their storm-tossed sky to penetrate the outer at Mopshir. Seconds later, the blinding flare of its demise greeted their eyes. Without even bothering to glance downward. Cell vanished. Naruto reappeared a heartbeat later in that exact location, scowling. Not bad. He vanished in an afterimage, his visage dissipating as Cell's fist phased through it, just grazing him. Why, thank you. Cell was suddenly there before him, but Naruto swiped forward with his fist, causing his fellow android to leap backward, his nimble body flipping backwards in the air before landing delicately on one foot. When neither hybrid made any move to strike, the biodroid afforded a slight smile and put his second foot on the ground. Impressive reflexes, he said, mocking his opponent as he cracked his neck. But I was actually hoping that you would be able to see through that one. His blonde eyebrows tightened. You wanted me to see through that? He asked skeptically. But of course. Cell replied at Naruto's frown. It wouldn't much of a game if you couldn't dodge my attacks. The game, huh? Blood began trickling from his forehead down into his right eye, causing him to blink hard against the sudden sting that swirled in his head. Damn, he thought as he his regenerative abilities began to kick in, his hands moving in practiced guarded movements, as his eyes remained focused on the smiling cyborg in front of him. I guess that attack did get me after all. The thought irked him somehow. He felt a slight sting as his healing powers began to work their way into the thin slice on his forehead, his eyes twitching shut as they applied the slightest amount of pressures upon his injury. He barely had time to block the strike. His eyes had opened just in time to see the cell's fist screaming downwards at his chest. His well-honed defenses had saved him, his arm rising up to block the attack, before his mind had even registered the possibility of movement. He was forced backwards by the strength of the blow, his calloused boots skidding painlessly across the stones as he dropped himself into a defensive pose. Impressive reflexes, 21, said the android, his deceptively soothing voice barely muffled by the distance between them. I hadn't assumed that you'd be able to block that attack. You were waiting for me to tend to my wound before attacking. Naruto asked within surprise. That's awfully mischievous of you. Am I incorrect in assuming you would do the same? He asked back, his turquoise eyes glaring into his that you wouldn't take advantage of such a fortuitous opening. Naruto shook his head to clear it, he would have done the same thing. Still, he said shortly, you're forgetting something. And what might that be? Cell rushed at him with a laugh, his arm swinging in a wide arc. 
To his surprise, Naruto leapt directly into his attack, his body crashing against the bio-android's fist with a loud clack. The blonde shoulder slid along the edge of his arm, the distance between their bodies' bodies diminishing with frightening speed. Cell spun his torso to the left at the last second, avoiding a potentially deadly strike, before coming back with another of his own. They shot apart, frowning. Well, damn. Naruto snarled, almost furious at the near miss. Persistent, much. Impertinence is quite an unsightly trait for one such as you, Cell quipped with dark amusement. I think I'll drag this out a little longer. Is that so? The blonde asked, his defense dropping as he stood straight up. Does that mean you'll release your true power for me? You wish to see my full strength? Cell asked, his hand tightening into a fist. How absurd. You wouldn't last even a second were I to reveal my perfect power. Try me. Naruto hissed. Not yet, he shot back, his body sliding backwards into attack position. I'll toy with you a little longer. Landing, he began to roll his right shoulder. But that's enough talk, he finished, rolling his limb back into place. It's time to continue. Scarce had he spoken than Naruto felt it. Pain. Cell's headbutt had startled him, driving him to the ground before he had time to react or defend. Ground burst before his face, carving yet another trench into the island's scarred exterior. Head still ringing from the blow, Naruto began to pick himself up, peering at his own shadow as reflected by the lightning. This. Could take a while, he mused to himself. I guess there's no point in saving energy now. Ha. Me. Ha. Me. Naruto cried, charging his Kai into his hands after having finally stood back to his feet. Suddenly increasing his speed, Cell rushed towards him and grabbed him by both wrists, ringing them up above his head. Miha nothing. He laughed in triumph. I know all about that pathetic technique. Miha. Naruto cried all the same. It had rushed back to him in that moment, a burst of inspiration, one didn't need their hands to use the Kamehameha. Putting both feet against the bio-android's chest, he released the power into his feet. The sudden and powerful blast rushed through his armor, spraying chunks of body armor and flesh all around. The android himself was even pushed back a few meters. When he finally came to a halt, the remainder of his armor completely crumbled around his chest and fell to the floor with a crash. Yet his face, that demonic and twisted smile, remained murderous with intent. Well done. He seemed almost amused by Naruto's improvised technique as he pulled himself upright. You've actually managed to wound me in my perfect form. Congratulations. Now, I've got a surprise for you. He flexed his muscles and then, to Naruto's disbelief, the wound simply restored themselves. Cell had just. Of course. Naruto facipumed. He can regenerate. Why am I not surprised? Shall we continue, then? His predecessor asked with a sneer. The shinobi snarled, lightning scrawling about his body. Vengeance would be his. He willed the Kaiken to flare about him, his power peaking, body adopting an offensive stance. Let's see how he handled full power. His aura buckled and bulged as he took his technique to its limit, multiply his power by the hundreds. For an instant, just an instant, he thought he saw fear in the eyes of his adversary. Then it was gone, bored aloft by a sneer, and he wondered if it had ever been. Cell. This time, I'll tear you to pieces. Well, I've heard that one before. The android scoffed. Come on, then. Naruto lunged, devoid of any kindness as he prepared himself for the clash. Watch out for this. Cell didn't ask what it was. He simply rushed forward, deadly blasts of Kai lunging forward before him as he approached his erstwhile opponent. He darted forward as well, his hand swinging to the inside, batting a side E blast in the span of an eye blink. He quickly altered his trajectory as he saw his counter-attack unfold, bringing himself to the inward of the blonde, before clashing with fist and foot in an outward swing. Surely he had the advantage now, as he found himself on the inside of his defenses, his fist running along the inside of his block, his deadly nails sliding down to his open chest. Naruto's fingers raked themselves across his face, slicing away at the skin that covered his mouth before biting into the helmet that took up the majority of his head. The cross chop was as sudden as it was unexpected, and he was not at all prepared, his helmet had already ceased to be by the time he realized he'd been injured. Cell leapt backward, blinking in surprise and pain as green blood gushed from the unexpected wound. Twenty-one's taut fingers had cleaved a small chunk of his face away, leaving the left side of his mouth bloody and exposed for all the world to see. Naruto laughed triumphantly before he began jumping in place, his now clawed hands raised before him in a boxer's stance. I told you to watch out for it. Cell stood from kneeling, the freshly exposed left side of his mouth curving upwards in a slight sneer, the greenish blood staining his ivory teeth. Growling, he regenerated his wounds once more. This was. Unexpected, to say the least. How could he have sustained such an injury? Was this boy better than him? No. He was Cell. He would not lose to this rage-adled buffoon. Perhaps I was wrong about you, he said venomously. 
Your strength seems to overwhelm your words. Allow me to wipe that smug smirk off your face. With the perfect power you were so anxious to see. He pointed his hands forward at Naruto, a wave of golden energy appearing behind him as his opponent smirked in obvious pleasure. I've been waiting for you to turn it up. And so I shall. A hurricane of Kai crashed around his body, enveloping Cell inside in a raging storm. Naruto leapt back onto one of the few remaining mountaintops that littered the small island. His smile faltered a fraction as Cell's Kai power shot forth like a solid wall, and he readied himself for the assault. Cell broke out from the golden swathe that was his own aura, muscled body streaking forward, his fist aimed directly for Naruto's unprotected gut. He was able to spin out of the way, but not without allowing his ribsage to remain wide open. Cell's black leg swung out as he passed him, his armored shin planting itself into his side. With a grunt of surprise, the shinobi Saiyan flew backwards off the cliff and deep into the earth, plunging beneath its surface like a splinter, his lungs struggling to take in air after the painful attack. Shit, he coughed out as he pulled himself out of the rock, blood speckling his lips. You weren't kidding about doing some damage with that power. Once more you've surprised me, Cell retorted with subtle malice. I wasn't expecting you to get up again. Sorry to exceed your expectations, Naruto said as he stepped back into a squatting posture. But I ain't done yet still got a few tricks up my sleeve. Super Kaiken. His Kai exploded and materialized into a column of crimson light, causing Cell to squint his eyes slightly against it. He readied himself as the energy levels grew, it had been a while since he'd faced such an opponent that could actually force him to be truly serious. The last thing he wanted was to be caught off guard. And Naruto had done just that. The boy continued to confound with his ever-increasing level of power, no matter what he faced, he always seemed to grow stronger from it. This was it the challenge he truly desired. He only prayed Son Goku would be able to amuse him this much when the time came. So, boy, this is your full power. He asked of Naruto. Just about. The hybrid grunted, leering at him through bloodshot. I can't stay like this for very long, though. Let's end this. Very well. Cell agreed. I. Naruto. Both androids whipped around, searching for the source of the sound, confused and irritated by the unexpected interruption. They'd just enough time to catch sight of a blue flare in the distance, and then they found all their thoughts unceremoniously put on hold. She slammed to a halt in the air overhead, gasping and out of breath. She seemed stressed to the point of tears nay, it looked as though she might burst out into joyous sobs at any moment. She could see the two of them, clear as day, but refrained from coming any closer. Damn it, she gasped, her voice carrying on the winds towards them, thank god. You're here. Naruto. You're actually here. Now what? Cell growled, infuriated by the interruption. These people are like cockroaches. Squash one and another crawls out of the wall. Naruto felt his eyes widen. He recognized her. He knew this woman, hanging over their heads like some grim harbinger of doom. A soft sound of surprise fled from his lips, joy threatening to overtake his rage and leave him powerless. Because she was here. Because she was alive, after he thought her dead. He gazed up into her dark eyes and did the only thing he could think to go. He gasped, his eyes drinking in every inch of her s, if he were a thirsty man, and she a tall glass of water. Because finally, at a long last. Dot Android 22 had arrived. Naruto took off like a rocket. There could be no other word for how he felt nay, how he reacted, swarming up through the air to greet her, grab her, take her in his arms, swinging her round like a top, never once letting go. He didn't question how she recognized him in this form and quite frankly, and never let her go. But he had to let go eventually, and when he did, he found himself staring into her eyes. Those deep dark beautiful bly eyes. They belonged to one woman he realized, and one woman only. Her name was Samui. Now that his memories had returned it was all too easy to remember how they'd met, how he'd fist fallen for the Kanoichi. It had been shortly after Payne's invasion, when Kumo came calling for information on the then missing shinobi turned S-class criminal, Ichihasa's K. Samui had been the leader of that team back then. She'd also been in charge of interrogating him for information on his former friend. Needless to say, Naruto hadn't taken kindly to that. Samui hadn't either. She wanted information on Sasuke Naruto refused to bequeath that information. They were at an impasse. Imagine his surprise when the Kanoichi had suggested a way to breach that impasse. Being a virgin, he'd known nothing of such things. But he would soon understand. Indeed, he soon learned that this normally cold-hearted woman could be quite warm when given the chance. One thing had led to another, and, well. Theirs had been a turbulent romance one that begun and ended much too swiftly at the hands of Abido and Madara. Many of his loves had died in that awful war, Samui had merely been the first victim. And yet, here she was now, standing before him as though it had never happened. As though she'd never been sucked into that gourd by Kinkaku and Ginkaki, never been devoured by the Jedomezo statue, never made a part of the Jaiubi that would later be slain. 
that she was standing here before him now was something in a miracle itself. Perhaps that was part of the reason he'd first felt attracted to 18, because she'd reminded him of a younger version of his long-lost love. Granted that was no longer the case, as he'd long since come to his fellow cyborg as a person in her own right, but the sudden sight of his long-lost love here and now, here before him now was enough to leave the already angry blonde even more unbalanced. He could feel his transformation slipping away from him, his power unraveling in the face of this sudden revelation. But he didn't care. Are you real? Finer words had been spoken before, but all the same he had to know, was this woman, this beautiful blonde in his arms, the same woman he'd fallen in love with? I, I think so. She managed, tentatively raising her hand up to cup his whisker cheek. Naruto could see that she was still reeling, still struggling to adjust to. This. To being alive. It had taken him some getting used to as well. But he'd had a week to realize he was alive and better than ever, he'd also had 18 and the others to keep him company. Samui had probably woken alone. Worse, she probably didn't have any of those old memories she had in life. Did she even remember him, he wondered. I remember you. When next she spoke, the words were so soft that he had to strain to hear them. You remember? He must have given voice to the thought, because Samui nodded back at him, her cheeks dusted the lightest shade of pink. Before he could think to stop her, she placed her free hand opposite his cheek and pulled. Drew his lips to hers and held them there. In that very instant world distal seemed to fall away beneath Naruto's feet. His hammering heart threatened to explode clear out of his chest, he could hear it pounding in his ears as loudly as a war drum, out for the hunt. With this in mind, it was all Naruto could do to draw her close, drink her in, and simply hold her. There was no clashing of the tongues, no mashing of the mouths, no groping of the hands. He simply held to her and she him their lips never leaving one another's even for an instant. You look different. She remarked, pulling away. Yeah, he chortled weakly, I've been through some changes. The power was still surging beneath his skin, ready to be called upon at a moment's notice. He could feel his own anger, barely held in check by Samui's continued presence, by the knowledge that she was here, alive, and that she remembered him. About that. What the devil was going on here? Cell could feel his patience slipping away, writhing through his fingers like a thing alive. With each passing moment he became more and more impatient, Ijurdo continue his battle. Just what did 21 think he was doing? They'd been in the midst of their bout when this woman dared to interfere. Oh, how it irked him. Was she an android? She must be had to be, because he couldn't sense any energy from her. Well then. The good doctor's supercomputer must still be hard at work beneath the earth. Odd, the thought didn't amuse him as much as it should have. Knowing that Jiro had created other androids after his birth simply didn't sit well with him. He had no desire to bear witness to this frilly romantic display any longer. If by some chance 21 were to unite with this woman. Well, best not to take any more chances. He could always absorb her himself, but he was already perfect, why mire that perfection with an imperfect creation? Besides, he no longer had any desire to absorb anyone. Still. Perhaps it might be best to nip this in the bud before Naruto became too strong. Slowly, he leveled an arm in their direction. As, stand aside, woman. Naruto whipped around, a warning leaving his lips. Too little, too late. Cell flung a finger forward, a death beam lanced out from his finger and struck her in the chest, piercing her heart. She remained there a moment longer, motionless, her mouth working wordlessly, blood dribbling from her lips. She reached for him, delicate fingers brushing his cheek. Her dark eyes, so vibrant and full of life and confidence, began to fade, like the lights going out, one by one. And yet she still managed to say his name. One. Last. Time. Naruto. He was helpless, helpless to do anything but hold her as she fell, slumping against him. He had no way of knowing she was still alive, of realizing that she'd merely gone into a trance to heal. That she was not dead, no not yet, but still a monster living. Had he been of a better mind, he might have realized she possessed the same regeneration as he. That she would be alright. But Naruto was not of a better mind right now. He wasn't of any mind. It was as if he'd never known rage before this very moment, any and all trace of sanity was obliterated in that instant. His heart shattered and blew away in the wind. Speech slipped beyond his grasp, tumbling through fingers too numb to hold them. The concept of good and evil flew out the window. Even his memories proved to be no match for this all-consuming fury. Everything was wiped clean, leaving only a boundless hatred that put even Broly's Super Saiyan rage to complete and utter shame. Well, now that we've gotten the trash out of the way, what say we continue? Cell said. He hadn't intended to pierce her heart with that last shot, but what did it matter? Dead was dead. Now, he had no need to worry about the possibility of any union between them. He never thought to consider his mistake, that by incapacitating 22, by placing her in a near-death state. He might provoke the very transformation that he'd wished to prevent. And provoke he had. 
Naruto twitched, hair standing on end. Slowly, gently, he laid 22 down upon the ground, lowering her to the earth like a husband would his bride. I'm sorry. He murmured, brushing her dark eyes shut. I'm so sorry. I couldn't protect you. Again. He'd failed to protect her once in life, and now he'd failed to protect her again. It was just. Why? Why? Why was this always his fate? Why did this always happen to Hip? What's taking so long? Cell demanded. Hurry up and get over here. Bastard. You. A rage-filled sneer shined out from beneath Naruto's jagged blonde bangs. That's Anuva. His hair stood on end and grew longer still, eyebrows vanishing in the wake of his unholy wrath, becoming little more than brow ridges. Lightning licked around him, responding to this newfound fury, ushering him into a never-before-seen state of absolute power. And still his hair grew longer, the spiky lock spreading down his back in a cascade of golden light. That bitch. With that, Naruto threw his head back and screamed, his body engulfed in brilliant power. He drank deep of the sun's light, allowing its energy to swell through his soul, to burgeon his reserves to inhumane heights. But Naruto had never been human to begin with now, had he? He'd always been something more. Hattered and mattered, his formerly spiky hair grew long and jagged, spreading out behind him, even as lightning surrounded his body. The earth quivered in fear, the air shook from the simple sight of the energy arising off his back and shoulders. It rose like a shroud around his body and engulfed him, coating the screaming slayer in an eerie golden aura. The eyebrows vanished banished by the cruel kais scrawling across his skin. Erupting out of his back and body they clambered forth from his form like an infestation, churning and burning across his burnished body, leaving singed skin beneath. I won't forgive you. Naruto screamed, his body bursting into renewed brilliance. Never. Never. Saffron bled from his body, the flames roaring high with intensity. They couldn't even approach him such was the blaze, couldn't hope to intervene and halt his transformation. And then, it was done. With a final guttural scream of red-hot agony, sweat pouring down his brow, and out of every pore, the blonde's body burst shining with light as he transcended his mortal coil. It was like watching the rebirth of a phoenix. When the smoke finally deigned to clear, Yuzumaki Naruto was gone. Something else stood in his place. His body shone with awkwardly radiance, bright as the sun, rippling with heat and energy. Hair the color of pure gold glittered down his back, leaving whiskered cheeks and an eyebrowless face exposed. His attire was, miraculously, intact despite the golden flames roaring over his shoulders and chest. He shifted, an almost imperceptible movement, and the earth eroded at his feet, cratering inward, in its haste to escape those blazing jade eyes, the unholy wrath held within them. Lightning crackled around his form, the air spitting and sizzling, from the friction his mere presence induced. Though humanoid in appearance, this being could no longer be called human. Nor could the Inkriti Kai rolling off his form. An earth-shattering scream exploded from the back of his throat, it did his sorrow a disservice, no words nor screams nor shouts nor snarls could ever hope to give voice to the emotions roiling in his chest. But one might. The transformed warrior uttered that word, and that word alone. C.E.L. Leagues away in other world, King Kai's antennae snapped to attention. He'd been silently monitoring the fight between Cell and this strange newcomer, his worry growing with each passing second. Whomever this boy was, he'd been putting up quite the fight. And that was before this latest transformation. Now his power was raging out of control, consuming his very life force as fuel for the fire that was his fury. If this didn't stop and soon, who knew what the outcome might be? And yet, one thing was glaringly apparent. The man was in mourning. Odd and there was nothing more dangerous than that. Another transformation, huh? Cell scoffed as he leered up at the vengeful angel that was his opponent. No matter. I'll squash him. Sneering, he raised an arm, fingers held high. Not only to have his wrist snared by the Saiyan. What? The ultimate android started in surprise, alarmed to find Naruto at his back. Teal eyes bored into his own, those inverted cross-shaped pupils narrow and intent upon his visage. Cell tried to back away, but 21 held him fast, he was forced to peer into the hate-filled eyes of his newfound opponent. Why don't you wake up? The warrior growled from where he now stood beside him. You're hurting people. What have they done to you? Try as he might the bio-android couldn't free his hand from the blonde's vice, though he struggled and spat and offered curse upon curse, there was simply too much resistance for him to break away. What devilly was this? How could this boy hold him back with only one hand? He. Shouldn't be able to do this. What was going on here? And then, incredibly inexplicably Naruto let him go. An opening. Ha. Cell ripped his fingers free of the Super Saiyan's grasp and slammed them into his opponent's unprotected stomach. Naruto didn't bat an eyelash. I can't let you take your unhappiness out on other people anymore. He shook his head slowly, lightning licking across his visage. You've killed too many innocents. What are you talking about? 
Sal snapped, he'd put everything he'd had into that punch, and it hadn't even phased him. It was beginning to make Jiro's ultimate creation more than a touch uncomfortable, here. I kill when I want. The weak die and the strong survive. That is the way of the universe. Alright, then. The blonde vanished with a hiss. We'll play by your rules, Cell. With a sudden whisper, Naruto reappeared behind Cell, his limbs engulfed in the bright golden light of his aura. He was extremely close to the android, his powerful leg bent back and ready to snap forward at his skull, like a sledgehammer. Cell saw him and reached down for the onrushing limb, but he wasn't going to be fast enough. Any hope of him outmaneuvering 21 was non-existent the moment that Naruto had gone so far, ascended to this pentultimate form. And this was going to hurt. Naruto spun around quickly, slamming his heel into Cell's body. With a surprise grunt, the pale-skinned android went flying down the island, a trail of dark blood following his body through the flying debris. Naruto was already after him, striding forward after the bot's flailing form. He watched, unconcerned as Cell's limp body slammed against the stones once gravity took hold of him, his armored skin skidding across the gravel as the momentum continued to drag him over the earth. Naruto's feet were suddenly free from the ground as he burst forward, his flight carrying him over the rain-soaked ground. Ah, Miha. Naruto flung his hands forward, unveiling the super Kamehameha he'd hidden behind his back. Shit. The blue beam of energy arced forward at the android from point-blank range. It plowed onward, pushing Cell backwards as he was forced to hold his block against a powerful attack. With a simple flick of his wrist, however, the ultimate android slashed the fang of energy in half. As his vision cleared, Cell saw that Naruto was already flying towards him in the wake of the attack, the cyborg's enormous aura now replaced by his smaller and more powerful lightning-shrouded form. And his hair was even longer than before. What the devil was going on here? It's over, Cell. We'll see about that. Their bodies crashed against each other once more as Cell launched into a flurry of strikes. Naruto dodged and parried perfectly, his movements appearing effortless in contrast with his opponent's sloppy, haste-driven attacks. Cell suddenly jabbed forward with his fist, the pale knuckles tip aiming directly for Naruto's chest. The hybrid skipped directly backwards and quickly lifted his elbow to counter, Cell's fist passing through hole of between body and limb. A yellow film of energy suddenly appeared within the circle, effectively halting the android strike. The android tugged against the defense, but his arm was completely frozen within the hole trapped between his opponent's arm and body. He looked up in smoldering fury as Naruto reached down and grabbed his right forearm, further locking him into place. A small orb of black light began to swirl around in front of the hybrid's lips as he pulled Cell even closer to him. His mouth opened as a malicious whisper emerged. Vijidama. The large blast slammed into Cell, leaving a swath of charred earth in the ground as it drilled through and demolished the nearest mountain. He emerged almost instantly, his body slightly scuffed from his unceremonious dirt nap, his mind reeling from the pain You never learn, do you? Cell balked, because Naruto was suddenly before him, teal eyes boring into his own. Fast. He hadn't even seen him move. He swung down at the boy's face, it was like hitting solid steel. Ordinarily such metal would have bent and buckled beneath his blow. Naruto didn't even flinch. Instead, Cell's violet eyes widened as the Saiyan cyborg placed an open palm against his amored gullet and levered himself upright. Something blurred just out of his sight, Two Lady realized the Super Saiyan was winding up for another of his high-powered kicks. His leg lashed out like a lightning bolt, spearing the android in the stomach. Cell struck out in kind, power swollen knuckles smashing into the blonde's face, but Naruto plowed right on through, as though he hadn't felt a thing, his fingers folding around the startled android's visage. Up he went. Then down. Down into the earth, his visage scraping across stones, dragged mericiliously against the ground in an exceedingly brutal fashion, being hurled away into the air like a rag doll. He flailed there for what might have been an eternity, cartwheeling wildly Eno the heavens before finally regaining his balance. Naruto was there to meet him seconds later, barring his path. He murmured a few words to himself. What are you muttering to yourself? Sal sneered. Have you gone insane? Dust a countdown? The blazing blonde answered. Don't worry, I'll end you before it reaches zero. Is that so? Cell replied, all playfulness now gone from his voice, replaced with uncharacteristic venom. Then that also means you can't stay in this form for very long. Naruto smirked darkly. That's right. Wonderful. Cell immediately flung a Kienzin from his palm, the white energy spinning in a disc of gold and white as it spun forward towards Naruto. With the remaining disc still in his hand, Cell slashed forward and summoned still another, sending three deadly discs in the direction of the Super Saiyan 3, even as he lunged forward to engage him in pitched combat. If he couldn't defeat him, then he had merely to outlast him. Once Naruto had expended his energy, he'd be as helpless as newborn kitten. Or not. 
The energy of the Kienzen was suddenly halted against the charred palm of Naruto's hand, the pent-up energy of the Destructo Disc extinguishing, as the large fist closed upon the whirling discus. With his free hand, the Saiyan slammed a punch into his android opponent's gut, sending the bio-droid flying several meters into the air. But the other, he reached out to casually deflect the remaining discs, sending them screeching into the soil at his feet. Then he pressed two fingers to his forehead and flashed upward, his body dissipating in a blur of motion too fast for the naked eye. Where did he? Special beam cannon. Cell didn't have time to react the attack came from too short a distance. The multicolored beam slammed against his chest and sent him spiraling backwards into the eastern side of the island. His vision was dizzying slightly as he stopped moving and the heat of the attic dissipated from his body, but he was able to see the light blue sky above him as he struggled to get up. Rather, he tried. Blinding agony consumed him when he tried to rise, and his fingers fled to its source. He gasped, his fingers fumbling at the large hole Naruto had drilled into him. Blood poured from the orifice, staining the stone at his feet. This can't be happening. Naruto was suddenly directly above him, his left arm outstretched and his index finger pointed directly at him. I may not be able to stay in this form for a very long cell, Naruto said coolly as he squeezed his eyes narrowed. His left thumb suddenly stuck out and he tilted his hand so that it looked almost like a toy gun. But that doesn't mean I can't obliterate you at the time of my choosing. His lips quirked in a small smirk sneer as a small sphere coiled at the tip of his finger, growing larger and larger with each second. Surrender. His word hung over Cell's head like a guillotine, waiting to drop. The android tried to rise. Rasen Shuriken Barrage. The massive wave of blasts erupted from Naruto's fingertip and rained downwards at Cell. He scrambled to get up and run, but he knew he wasn't going to make it. The wall of Rasen Shuriken was quickly descending upon him he could feel its heat on his retreating back. He turned and crossed both of his arms over his body in an attempt to guard himself from the blast, his eyes closing as the deathly inferno charged closer. No. Not like this not like. The a cram. The explosion came, and there was pain, burning. Then he felt nothing. But darkness underneath his closed eyes. But, for some reason, he knew he was still alive, but not unharmed. He opened his eyes, slowly at first, wary for any sort of trick, before they flew wide at the sight. His mouth hung open as he beheld the loss of his lower torso. It was gone, severed in a matted tangle of flesh just below the waist, the blasts having cut the armor through like it was made of tissue paper. Cell regenerated in an instant, but though the physical wound had been healed, his pride would never recover from such a blow. This boy was toying with him. Making of mockery of him. Him. Cell. The ultimate life form and the perfect being. How dare he. That's come. Trash. He had no idea what true power was. How. Dare you. Cell wiped a bit of greenish blood away from his mouth, unable to believe how easily he'd been damaged. All in a single punch. No. This couldn't be happening. He was in his perfect form. Complete. His power was at its maximum. He couldn't lose. There was just no way. How dare you? Power surged forth from him, bulking his muscles to inhumane heights. His body became large and grotesque, swelling with power, at the cost of speed. Bellowing his fury, he lunged at the Super Saiyan, a massive fist cutting through the air where he'd been only moments before. Curse him. He lunged after the swift Saiyan with a roar, fingers closing around a few stray strands of golden hair as the blonde backpedaled and escaped him yet again. Damn him, Cell thought. Damn him to the bleakest pits of hell. Why couldn't he hit him? Hold still so I can crush you, boy. Time and time again he tried to hit him, but no avail, his newfound strength was slowing him down. Those powerful muscles served only to make his movements clumsy and slow making him easy prey for the smaller, more nimble Saiyan weaving in and out of sight beneath him. And when Naruto finally grew tired of dodging those slow punches, he struck. Hard. Cell gagged as the punch sheathed itself in his stomach as before, buried to the elbow. The only difference being that there was this time a great deal more force behind the blow. He choked and swallowed, bile rising in his throat, a hard knot forming deep within his stomach. Alongside something else. Something that was fighting to get out of him even now working its way up through his stomach rising past his lungs. Naruto must have sensed it as well, because those teal eyes widened, only to narrow seconds thereafter. Cell, he began slowly, I have one last thing to say to you. You done goofed. When the blonde struck him this time, there was nothing Cell could do to stop him. Power fled from his stomach and into his chest then further, rising rapidly. His hands fled to his throat, struggling to stifle the swelling bulge, even as it pushed up through his mouth. Too little, too late. With sickening squelch he vomited, divesting himself of his oh-so-coveted perfect powers. Naruto struck for a third and final time, burying his boot into Cell's stomach, destroying the last bastion that held his fleeing power back. Leerg. A humanoid form burst out of his mouth and flopped wetly to the ground. 18. 
Naruto slowed his advance, gawping at the slime-soaked figure lying at his feet. Shock flitted across his visage. He bent to check at her pulse and his eyes widened, she was alive. She'd been alive inside cell the entire time. Which meant, now that she'd been removed from him. Come back to me, 18. Desperate, Cell grabbed at her, trying to shove the cybered back into his mouth into his body before he could truly suffer the full effect of her loss. Naruto was suddenly there, an uppercut shattering his jaw another, cratering his solar plexus inward in a shower of shattered armor and green blood. Blow after blow barreled into him, driving Cell away from the one thing that could return him unto perfection, distancing him from her in a geyser of blood and broken bits. A final strike sent him plowing Fasifirst into the stone, skidding away from the Saiyan and the cyborg. Naruto drew back on a sudden, scowling. That's enough. He decided. You're not even worth killing anymore. No. Cell could feel his power slipping away from him. Try as he might his perfect form began to fade as he stumbled to his feet regressing to the garish hideous creature that he'd been before his perfection. Fearing for his life, he risked a glance at 21, saw the supreme scowl marring the man's face. Damn him. Damn them all. Damn them. If he was to lose, then he'd take the whole planet with him. Yes. Everyone would die, for embracing him so. Starting with this boy. Once more his body began to bulge, but this time his muscles weren't the only thing to swell. His entire body seemed to inflate from within, puffing up like a large balloon. Larger and larger he swelled, towering over his opponent, cheeks puffing like a giant pufferfish. He would explode and take everything with him. Everything would turn to darkness. It's over, fool. Sal gloated. I'm going to blow up this entire planet. You fraught well, but we'll call it a draw. Nope. Naruto didn't let him finish. He struck upward with his leg, putting all his power behind the singular blow. Cell didn't have time to detonate, he barely had time to blink before the blonde launched his bloated hide up off the floor and into the upper atmosphere, then further, into space itself. Cell tried to push his power back down, but it was already too late, he was nigh in the brink of imploding. Try as he might he couldn't contain the energy, exploding just as he cleared the atmosphere. What in the world was that? Son Goku and Son Gohan felt the explosion as they stepped out of the hyperbolic time chamber. It was the former who had spoken, having sensed Cell's mighty explosion mere moments after emerging from the room of spirit and time. All around them the lookout had begun to tremble. But how was that possible? Wait. There was still another power down there somewhere on Earth. One unlike he'd ever felt before. It was. Massive in size and scope reaching up to throttle them, even from here. Gohan felt it as well. Just as he realized he couldn't sense Vegeta anywhere. But he could sense Piccolo and Trunks. What on earth was happening? What events must have transpired during their day of training? He didn't know, Son Gohan didn't, but he had the succinct feeling he was about to find out. Dad. I know, son. Goku soothed his progeny. Stay here and wait for Piccolo. I'll go take a look. Placing two fingers to his forehead, the Earth's mightiest warrior vanished. Ah dump. The explosion, when it came was blinding, deafening in its retort. Everyone for miles around felt the planet tremble. Naruto didn't pay any attention to it. He was far too focused on the prone form of Android 22 and the serene, almost peaceful look in her eyes, as though she'd wake up and smile for him at any moment. Tears stung at his gaze. He traded one for the other again. 18 for Samui. Samui for 18, a loss to his heart is very soul once agent. Ah dump. Naruto stood there for a long moment, hot tears brimming in his jaded eyes. The earth began to tremble around him, not just the island, but the entire planet felt his fury, his sorrow, his unmitigated rage, building and building and building until finally, at long last. Ah dump. I I I omni it. Ah the Super Saiyan began to scream. I I I omni it. Naruto threw back his head and screamed, letting his power and grief have their sway. The earth erupted around him for miles around, what little remained of the island began to crumble away into the ocean. Only the ground where he stood where Samui and number 18 lay remained untouched his will was all that held their bodies in place. Water parted around him like the Red Sea, great walls of impregnable fathoms stretching upward for miles upon miles on end. Black clouds blotted out the sun, lightning streaked through the forlorn sky alongside his tears. He felt the earth shaking apart around him, realized what would happen if he continued to raise his kai. Naruto didn't care. If they were dead, then he wanted to die too. But he could only power up so much before his power finally reached a plateau, before it peaked. And try as he might, he wasn't willing to blow himself up just to. With a weak gasp, he sank to his knees, sobbing. Despite his exhaustion and subsequent battle with Cell, he'd only sustained superficial wounds. His regeneration had saved him again. But the onslaught of emotion did him little good, however. He reached a hand up to the newly formed cut in his chest, one of many that now adorned his body. His blood was merely trickling out from the wound. 
That was good, the absolute last things he needed was a deep gash to add to his fatigue. He glanced at his hand and himself, realizing he'd reverted to his Super Saiyan 2 state. That's right he mused. I can't stay in that super-powered form forever now, can I besides, my energy will last longer, this way. But what was Naruto going to do with himself now? With Cell defeated, it felt like he no longer had any purpose in life anymore. Well, he could always kill Goku. But that was the doctor's programming talking not him. He. Naruto stood woodenly at the thought, rising on unsteady legs, not taking enough care where he planted his feet. As a result, he almost stepped on 18. He gazed down at her still form, her chest rising and falling ever so slightly with life. The ocean's eruption had since cleaned her of the slime, she'd be soaking wet and shaking with chills when she awoke. Did androids get chills, he wondered. Regardless, she still had a pulse he reminded himself, with a good night's sleep, she would live to see another sunrise. The thought heartened him somewhat. But Samui. His poor beloved Samui. Damn cell to hell for what he'd done to her. He could still see the hole where the death beam had pierced her strange, did it look smaller somehow. Sparks skittered around him again, his anger and Saiyan cells threatening to usher him onto even higher heights of power. He didn't know what lay beyond the Super Saiyan 3 form the hair was ridiculous. But he'd the succinct feeling he might find out if his power kept rising at this rate. The foul wind stirred at his back, breaking through his rage. His senses prickled a warning just as a golden meteor descended from the heavens, streaking toward him from on high. For a moment Naruto fancied it was an angel, come to deliver him to heaven for slaying Cell. But no, this was no angel. It was a Kai Blast. Coming down for him. The blonde raised a hand and parried the shot without a second thought, wincing, as it seared his fingertips in passing, slamming past him and into the island, kicking up a fierce cloud of smoke. The ascended cyborg stared at his charred palm for an instant longer, flexing his felt fingers. Who could have possibly? Ah ha ha a smug voice chortled within the haze. Felt that one, did you? The hard knot of anger formed in Naruto's stomach, he flared his aura to its fullest, blowing away the dust and debris that obscured his vision. Imagine his surprise when he found himself staring a specter straight out of nightmare, a creature who'd blown himself to bits mere moments before. Lightning crackled around his form, lending his armor an eerie green glow. But there could be no mistaking those eyes nor that face. That smug smile that simply refused to die. Cell. He'd survived. You thought you'd never see me again, didn't you? Well too bad. A devilish smirk twisted at his pale face, I'm alive. You could even say that I am new and. God improved. Naruto grunted in surprise as the android pounced, power swollen knuckles ground into the side of his visage, smashed into his face with all the force of a jackhammer. Shit. Cell was stronger than he'd expected. With a flash of light, the Super Saiyan flew backwards, a long swath of destruction following his falling body. Cell turned to face him his retreating form, time passing slowly as his lips quirked in the slightest of smiles, only to vanish as the blonde took up the torso of a fence and bounded forward, pining him up against a nearby rock formation. His bright jade eyes were wide and furious as blood spilled from his lips, a world of snarl practically leapt from his mouth. Their boots bit into the dirt, each slitting back half a pace, neither willing to budge. Surprised. Cell sneered at him as they struggled with one another, grappling for an advantage. So am I. I'd thought to take you and everyone else with me when I exploded, but thanks to that little kick of yours, you managed to save the planet. For now. Want to know how I survived the blast? Ignoring Naruto's growl of rage, he continued, cocking his head slightly aside. Well it was actually quite simple. It is all in here. It's part of my design. Every cell has a life of its own. I can't die, it is impossible. Even if I self-destruct, I will always come back. Not even you can kill me. Naruto frowned. Are you done talking yet? He wasn't interested in any of that. They gazed upon one another, the shinobi turned Saiyan cyber glaring at the cell, and the so-called ultimate perfection that he'd attained. And it was to his dismay that Naruto realized Cell was just as strong as him in his ascended Saiyan state, if not Moreso. How could he come back so strong? Surprising, his opponent retorted, mistaking his silence for civility. I was expecting something much more. Vulgar. But since you've decided to remain civilized I suppose I'll do the same. Suddenly, and without warning, the armored android pulled himself free from the blonde's grasp, retreating to a negligible distance. I thought Dr. Jiro only meant for me to defeat the Earth, but I know now, I was designed for so much more. Once I am finished tearing you and this world into pieces, I'll just use move on to other planets. That is my destiny. I am the universe's end. You just don't know when to quit, do you? Naruto scoffed. I've already killed you once, and you still want more. Is life some kind of sick game to you? You treat it like it's a contest or something. But this is one bout you won't be walking away from. 
Even as he uttered these last words his power came roaring back, leaving the Saiyan cyborg standing at full strength once more. Golden hair cascaded down his back, ushering him onto his newfound Super Saiyan 3 state. If he played his cards right, he had about two more minutes in this form before he ran out of energy. More than enough time to end the android standing in front of him. If he could just obliterate every single one of Cell's cells in a mighty, apocalyptic blast. This time, his adversary didn't even bother to lunge. The contest. Cell blinked, an awful idea dawning upon his sparking visage. Ah, yes. That's it. A tournament. He held up a hand in offering. Splendid. Think of it as my gift to you, for granting me this newfound power to wield. It will be our ultimate stage, where the fate of this planet will be decided. Naruto stared at the offered palm for a long moment in open disbelief. What? The hell? We'll call it the Cell Games. The lightning-shrouded android decided. It'll take place 10 days from today. I have yet to decide on the location, so be sure to keep an eye on the television. Bring as many fires as you'd like. The more allies you have, the better your chances of winning will be. He paused and turned in place as though something had just occurred to him. Oh and do bring Goku along for the ride with you. I'm eager to test these newfound perfect powers of mine against him. Finally his smile slipped, he could see Naruto's unconcealed derision. Hum now 21, why the long face? You should be happy. You have both women to yourself now, I've no need of either of them anymore now. This way, you and I can truly have our final battle with no regrets at all. And become even stronger for it. I just can't wait to see that look of hate and fury on all their faces. Naruto growled, his visage twisting with anger. That's it. That's the look. As if I'd let you live until then. Would you rather I destroy the earth now? Cell challenged. I'd stop you. Naruto spat back, even as a glimmer of hesitation wormed its way into his mind. Even for all your speed I'm still faster than you. Maybe. Or maybe not. The unspoken threat hung like a guillotine over them. You might be able to stop me. But let's say I do destroy the earth. You'd survive the explosion of course, but are you really willing to risk the lives of your friends over there? He cast a glance toward the prone bodies of Samui and 18, his lips quirking in a cruel smile. They hardly strike me as the durable type. 21 opened his mouth to reply. Then snapped it shut. If there was even the slightest chance that Cell wasn't bluffing. He was faster, true, but if there was a chance, even the slightest chance that Cell somehow got the better of him. Fine. With a supreme effort of will, the Super Saiyan willed himself to lower his hands at his sides. I'll play your little game for now. But I will be your first opponent. Understand I don't care about Son Goku and the others, this is between you and me. And make no mistake, you bucket of bolts. I will be the one to kill you. Until then. Cell gave a flourish of a bow and departed, taking to the skies before the blonde could think to renege on his side of the deal. Naruto watched him go and resisted the urge to blast him to pieces. He felt his rage building again, his fury at being outsmarted, threatening to send him into an apocalyptic fury. Already the earth was beginning to shake beneath him. Damn you to hell Cell. Whoa, man. Goku exclaimed. It feels like the whole planet's coming apart. Naruto whipped around in alarm, his roar of rage cut short by the Saiyan's sudden appearance. Where the devil had he come from? Wait a minute. Blonde, spiky hair. Green eyes. Orange guy. This was him. Son Goku. A snarl built in the back of his throat. In a way, this man was indirectly responsible for everything he'd had to deal with. If the fool had just killed Dr. Jiro all those years ago, then he wouldn't have been resurrected from the dead. And he wouldn't be feeling this pain right now. The pain of loss. That's an awesome power you have there. He exclaimed, taking the blonde in. I'm guessing you did a number on Cell. Ah yes. The blonde replied at last, his gaze straying to the prone forms of Samu and 18. Although it wasn't without cost. Well, we can always bring them back with the Dragon Balls if they're actually dead. Goku replied cheerily. Oh, but we'd need a new guardian for that. Are you? What? Muffled talk erupted from Naruto's lips, and Goku fought down the urge to laugh, as the former shinobi took his lip between his teeth and held it there. He refused to back down here. Not while facing someone who looked like that. His eyebrows, he noticed apprehensively, were missing and in its place was a very prominent, very large, very bulging brow bridge. His unusual golden locks were ten times longer than before and stuck out in sharp points as it fell past his waist, a single bang brushing past his left eye. All in all, Naruto didn't even look remotely like Naruto. Despite that, Goku didn't think he was a bad guy. His Kai had an almost sorrowed aura to it, as though he'd gained these newfound powers solely through the pain of loss. And he was strong. He couldn't help himself. He wanted to see just how strong this newcomer really was. Say, do you want to spar? Naruto's deadpan was barely concealed. Are you kidding me right now? Nope. That does it. His eyes flared a fierce jade. 
I am going to. Eh? I'll kick your ass. What? Trunks shouted, his shocked scream ringing out over the entire lookout. Piccolo shook his head. Vegeta was a fool who was willing to help create the future you're here to try and change, just to feed his own selfish pride. We're not bringing him back. The Prince of Fools is too dangerous for his own good. All he did was make things worse, and the arrogant nitwit might have unleashed something even worse than Cell. Trunk couldn't believe it. He was just supposed to accept his father's death, but the first one to die that lead to the path of the future he was trying to change was Vegeta. The two's argument was forgotten as they heard the rush of air, and they felt a Kai signature power down. Turning, the pair gapped. Oku was there, holding Android 18 bridal style as the female Android had yet to awaken. Furthermore, Android 21 was with him. However, it was the unconscious woman Naruto was carrying that caught their attention. She was a fair-skinned woman of tall stature who had straight blonde hair framing her face cut in an asymmetrical bob style, with the front bangs on the left and right sides of her head reaching her shoulders. She wore a very low-cut outfit which displayed her sizable cleavage, with mesh armor underneath, a short skirt and red hand guards, high boots, and what appeared to be a modified flak jacket of some sort that covered her stomach only, similar to a girdle. All in all, she looked like an adult version of Android 18, or an older sister. Wow what the hell is that thing doing here Trunks screamed, pointing accusingly at Naruto. Goku glared at Trunks, stopping the younger Saiyan cold. Trunks, enough. I don't like it either, but the problem is that we were going about the situation all wrong. We've been going about this all wrong. The minute Cell showed up, we should have put the other androids under our protection. At the time, Cell becoming complete seemed at worst a minor inconvenience, a stronger opponent but only one battle. That came back to bite us, and now we need all the help we can get. Even if it's from an enemy. The enemy of my enemy is my friend, huh? Fine by me. I just want to send Cell's ass to hell on general principles for everything he's done. Naruto said. But. This android. It. Trunk sputtered, trying to get Goku to see reason, to understand that he couldn't trust these soulless automatons that were the product of a madman's twisted mind. I'm a he, not in it for starters. And I wouldn't have killed that Dumbus if he hadn't done what he did. Vegeta made his choice and was too obsessed with flaunting his ego to give so much as three hairs off a dead rat's left ass cheek worth of a damn about the consequences and fallout. The man cared only for himself and his own sense of superiority to care about anyone or anything else. If his pride was that much more important to him than the lives of his wife, son, and all the lives on an entire planet, or even his own life, it would have been crueler to leave him alive. I did as a favor by killing him, much as it sickens me to admit. Although I wouldn't mind bringing him back just to kick his ass again. Trunks grit his teeth and glared at Android 21 his anger threatening to boil to the surface at any moment. Hatred, nay, utter loathing burned within him at that. What was worse was that there was no real way for Trunks to deny that. He'd seen his father's arrogance firsthand and that he was willing to actually aid Cell in his completion. Naruto looked at Trunks with annoyance, Gakua had explained that Trunks' future was destroyed thanks to Dr. Jiro's creations, and that had been why the young Super Saiyan hadn't believed him when he tried to put distance between himself, 18, and Cell, since he'd been so burned by the androids. But the fact that he knew it was bad to have Cell and 18 in close proximity to one another and had stopped them from getting away. Right now though, Naruto had more important matters to concern himself with, namely Samui and 18. Trunks noticed the new woman was breathing, but he couldn't sense an energy signature. He raised his hands to prepare an energy blast, but Goku's voice cut him off from gathering energy. Cell shot her. Of course you wouldn't feel any energy from her, she's barely alive and needs to recover. Too many questions if she was taken to a hospital. Goku said. The others all went wide-eyed at that. Cell had shot the other blonde woman. Explaining that to a hospital staff would be difficult. But hadn't Cell already absorbed 18? What was she doing here? I'll explain later, Naruto. Uh. 21. Whichever you want to to call, follow me. Goku said. Following Goku, Naruto headed into one of rooms that actually had beds and each of the female androids down in them. That was some power you were putting out. I was actually worried you were going to kill me when we fought. Goku said offhandedly. As they shut the door behind them after leaving the two to rest. Naruto winced, yeah. Sorry about the misplaced aggression, but. I just. I hate losing people I'm close to, and they're all I've got. But how did you know they were still alive? Goku looked at the bot, no sense telling about King Kai. You'd think I was crazy if I did, but let's just say I had some good help with learning that. Naruto looked at him pointedly. I'm a ninja from another era who was resurrected through genetic reconstruction as an android built to kill a humanoid alien, which turns into a giant laser-spewing ape when it sees the full moon, and you think that I would call you crazy? Are you serious? Goku shrugged self-consciously at that. Good point. 
a Shin Jin named King Kai, a deity and ruler of the North Galaxy, and my final martial arts teacher, he's able to use telepathy. Uses it to monitor things. Goku said. Naruto nodded. He kept an eye on them, remind me to thank this Kai guy if I ever meet him, and if he doesn't already know. Now what say we find the kitchen? I need some ramen. Ramen? Don't get me wrong, the stuff's good, but that's too plain, why not chashu pork instead? Goku asked. Naruto froze mid-step and slowly turned to Goku, his body trembling and high eyes shadowed by his hair. Id. You just. Insult. Raymond. He asked through gritted teeth. Piccolo, Trunks, and Mr. Popo all jumped as an energy blast tore through the side of the lookout, and when it dissipated, they were shocked to see Goku had been on the receiving end, hovering in the air, and looking as if he'd just gotten into a fight. I knew it. I knew we couldn't trust that damn android. Trunks screamed. The time traveler's worlds were cut off as a battle war Naruto flew out and plowed into Goku. I'm telling you, it's Raymond. No way. Chashu is so much better. Goku shouted. They're trying to kill one another. Over an argument about food. Trunks asked, gobsmacked. He didn't get it. Idiots. Piccolo groaned. Suddenly, two blue flares zoomed up to the squabbling pair. Naruto froze in the midst of catching Goku's punch, blue eyes bulging. It seemed their squabbling had awoken the two ladies from their slumber. They each grabbed one of Naruto's arms and dragged him back to the top of the lookout, both looking upset as they landed. Naruto. Said Samui. 21. Began 18. Naruto gulped, for all his power, the mighty machine was going to face the one thing he was afraid of, barring a shortage of Raymond. A woman's fury. Who the hell is this? The two females demanded in stereo. That's it for today guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video if you do please leave a like share and subscribe. Take care.